Welcome to the Holistic Kid Show. My name is Zane. My name is Noah. And my name is Imad. We're the Holistic Kids here to educate us kids from the inside out. Imad, what did you have for lunch? Air. What did you have for snack time? Air. I'm fasting. It's Ramadan. Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan Mubarak. <laughs> You're right. Wow. We all ate the same lunch and snacks. Because we are all fasting for Ramadan. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar observed by Muslims worldwide as a month of fasting, prayer, reflection, and community. So even though it's not a must for kids, we love fasting. Then you love eating afterwards, right? Oh, yes. But unfortunately, most Muslims break their fasts on junk food packed with artificial preservatives, colors, and terrible oils. So wait, some Muslims fast all day long and then destroy their bodies with fake food. That doesn't make sense. Why destroy the biggest blessing God gave us, our bodies? Doesn't that go opposite of what we're supposed to do? Hmm, we need help. <laughs> Fast. So to help us with that, we have Miss Yvonne Maffei. Is that good? Maffei. Maffei, okay. okay. It rhymes with buffet, like the food buffet. Maffei, Maffei buffet. Easy way to remember she it. <laughs> Miss Yvonne Maffei, Maffei, the founder of the hugely popular cooking blog, and Islamic's lifestyle website, myhalalkitchen.com, she has earned a vast following in the United States and the internationally, including a Facebook page totaling near, nearly 1 million likes. Born in Ohio to Sicilian and Puerto Rico, uh, Puerto Rican parents, Maffei Muff, developed a love for the diverse culture and styles of food, like the, the cuisines. Between her BA and MA, and in international studies at Ohio University in the trip spanning the globe. Maffei honored her cooking skills and the ability to adapt a ra wide range of cuisines to her family's dietary customs. Her, recipe her recipes specialize in uh, the halal standards while also focusing on all natural organic ingredients. Mubarak. Ramadan Mubarak. A little bit too late for that. I already said that. Yeah. <laughs> Ramadan Mubarak, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. It's a it's an honor. I I've heard about your show for a long time. I've watched a couple episodes. Thank My you. mom's a huge fan. She watches you guys a lot. So I'm I'm honored to be here. Thank you. It's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. <laughs> so let's start off with some basics. How did you get to where you are right now? We would love to know your story. Oh, know. it's a long story. Well, uh, okay, I'll try to make it quick. Um, well, like you said in the intro, which was lovely, thank you. Um, I grew up with parents who are from two different uh, places around the world. My dad was born in Italy. My mom is from Puerto Rico. But I grew up in Ohio, not far from Chicago, where you guys are. Mm -hmm. a Midwest girl but with the love of food because everybody around me was always making amazing food, homemade from scratch. My grandparents used to pick tomatoes and make their own tomato sauce. And, you know, I remember the smells and the pizza she used to make from scratch and pastas and just great food, you know, and mm -hmm. then I grew up. I, and I, and I went off to university. I had to cook for myself. That's not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. So I remembered all of those, you know, great recipes that I had from my mom, my grandmothers, my aunts, and I tried to just cook, you know, tried to figure it out myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I also, I was studying international studies. So I went overseas to Spain and Morocco and Italy and Mexico. So I was in all these different cultures with amazing food and of course, I always look to the grandmas, like, what were the grandmas making? Because grandmas, like, make the best food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they always do. Right? From scratch, yeah. they take their time. And they. The, the thing is, they always want to feed you. They want you to eat. Mm -hmm. Right? You're yes. Yeah. That, right? I've had my experiences with that. <laughs> yeah. So it's it was something that influenced me. And I, I thought, you know, I love this feeling of, making people happy and healthy with good food. Because when somebody tries your food and they go, oh, mm, it's so delicious, mm -hmm. you just feel so happy. You feel so good like that you gave them something that they they like and also that you know it was good for you, good for them. Mm -hmm. It's good for 
the, the, the body, good for the soul, good for your family connections and all of that. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I didn't know about halal until I was much older in life. And so I, I became Muslim in my 20s and then I had to adopt halal. Because obviously, as a Muslim, we eat halal. So, yeah. but I I didn't want to stop eating Italian food or Puerto Rican food or even all American food, right? I, I had to figure out how to make everything that I was eating halal. And mm-hmm. so yeah, that made me really read all the food labels and all the ingredients, and then I started learning what was in our food, and I thought, oh my god, there's there's a lot of unhealthy stuff in our food. Mm-hmm. A lot. Yeah, and so when I went to the masjid for iftar, which is the breaking of the fast, I noticed that, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of food that we have that's just not healthy. It may mm-hmm. seem, yes, it's halal, of course, but we're going towards junk food. We're going towards, you know, things that are just convenient, and we're going away from traditional food, and that kind of made me sad, and I thought, I really need to do something about this, so that's when I started the My Halal Kitchen website. And later on, I met your mom because mm-hmm. we both agreed on that same principle that we need to not just eat halal, but also bayib, which mm-hmm. is like yes. more pure and, and uh, to the earth. And so that's, in a nutshell, the story. Mm-hmm. Wow. So Americans spend about $70.1 billion on eating out too, way too much. Around 20% of their total food budget is spent by Americans on on rough, on like on eating out. Roughly 49% of the money spent on, on food by Americans goes toward eating out with so much people, so many people eating out. Yeah. Why is cooking at home so important? Oh, that's such a great question. And you know what? You were you guys are the first ones to ever ask me that in all the years I've been doing this. It's such a great question. Why is it so important? Because many, many, many reasons. But let's say, first of all, you know what's in your food, right? When you buy something from the grocery store, sometimes you you pick up a product and it looks like a scientific experiment is, is happening there. There's so many words you don't understand because they're ingredients that come from a lab and not from the trees, not from the plants, right? So it it becomes very difficult to understand what is in uh, a convenient product typically. So when you cook at home, you you know all the things that are going into a certain recipe. You made that, you're sure of what's happening. You can control how clean everything is too, right? You know, washing your hands, washing, making sure your kitchen is clean. That's really big. Hygiene is important, Um, but also, I think the act of chopping the vegetables and chopping the herbs and getting that aroma in your in your home and having things. Don't you love when your mom's cooking? Yes. You walk home, yeah, because they're like, hey, you I smell. It's yeah, like, oh, good. I can't wait until I break my fast. Yes, and that's so good. I'm sure your mom's explained that that it gets your digestive juices going because mm-hmm. you. Smell you start to smell and you slowly anticipate food, which is very important for your digestive system. And mm-hmm. then you, the, but I think the most important thing of all is that when you eat at home, you are really consciously sitting down and eating as a family, right? You're mindful of mm-hmm. that time together. You could do that in a restaurant, but there's more distractions. Maybe there's a TV on, maybe there's music, maybe there's lots of people. And you kind of don't have the same attention that you do to your family table mm-hmm. that you do when you're at home. You know, you can talk in peace. And there's quiet, hope, you know, aside from the normal banter, but you're home. It's a comfortable space and it's a very important uh, thing to do to spend quality time together. And that makes memories, mm-hmm. right? That's why we attach food and memories and we remember the people we love through through those those times together at the table. I cook a lot at home. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I cook a lot at home. I've been what do you make recipes. I make mm-hmm. a lot of different stuff. Usually, it's just for right now, it's just like simple stuff. Yeah, that like takes a couple ingredients and stuff. But I'm I'm getting there. I'm getting mm-hmm. there. It's baby steps. 
So what, what do you aspire to make? Like, what's the, what's the thing that you want to learn how to make someday? Um, more complex recipes, but at the same time, I want to be able to make recipes that I know um, are sustaining my family and are helping. So um, what, that's, yeah, what is so like specific sad. that you would really want to make in the future? Me? Or are you asking Noah? Uh, anyone, but any, both of you guys. <laughs> Eating me. <laughs> I want to get better at making bread and and pa and you know like pastries instead of buying them from the store because mm -hmm. bread is, when you buy from from the store the ingredients are typically not so great mm -hmm. at all and that's yeah. why there's a big yeah. push the smell of freshly baked oh freshly baked bread and pastries mm -hmm. at home very nice right but it takes practice everything takes practice so just keep doing it just keep yeah. doing cooking is like a it, it's like a experimentation, right? You have to fail. You have to keep doing it and fail to kind of get to the result that you want. There's a rule in cooking too, that you must test, uh, taste the food as you cook. Can't mm -hmm. do that when done, but yeah, um, all chefs, yeah, you know, you can't. Well, you can kind of put it on your tongue, but not, you know, ingest it. So that's another topic. But when you if, you, if you were a chef in a restaurant or a culinary, you know, program school, you would you would test the food as you cook it. You would taste it and adjust it. So if you you know if it needed more salt or pepper or spices or herbs, you know that's how you learn, right? You you fail so that you can then do better the next time, and you you keep trying. keep mm -hmm. trying, keep trying. You know, no rec recipes are just like guidelines, right? They're just there to yeah. kind of give you a format to follow, but then you add your own artwork to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does someone start to how does someone start to be creating a Ramadan halal kitchen? Because you create some amazing stuff. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yes, you have my book. Okay, mm -hmm. so how does one create a Ramadan kitchen? Well. You know, I think I, at, in the beginning, I, I have to say I was I was really stressed out about Ramadan. When I first started fasting, I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to mm -hmm. how am I going to, you know, fast all day and then feel, you know, like there was a stress and an anxiety about food. Yeah. And I, was, I made the mistake of getting too many things many years ago. Now I've gotten better. Now I think the trick is to simplify recipes and to simplify the table. Like what I try to do before Ramadan starts is I clean out my kitchen. I clean out all the cabinets. I get rid of anything old. I make sure like if I have double of something, I condense it so that I'm not wasting money when I go shopping for Ramadan stuff. So it's, a, it's like a fresh slate to start the month off. And I stick to very simple foods like soups, like rice with meat or um, roast chicken or just something where you don't, I don't need to go to the grocery store often, maybe just to buy the fresh vegetables and the meat. But everything else, um, I don't buy anything processed. Um, I just do what's like looks nice at the grocery store. I'll find like, let's say the cucumbers look great today and so does the tomatoes, but mm -hmm. the carrots don't look so great. So I'll just buy what looks good, what's, you know, hopefully in season, bring that home and then just come up with something based on what's fresh and beautiful. And typically that's lots of salad and soup. Soup is excellent in Ramadan because when you've fasted all day, it's a great meal to have to kind of get your body adjusted to food again after 10, 12 hours of fasting. That's mm -hmm. why if you look at like Moroccan cuisine or a lot of North African or Turkish cuisine, they, they have a lot of soup at iftar because it helps your body just, your stomach kind of get warmed up again after a long day of fasting. So, and, and soups, you know, you can add all kinds of veggies to them and things like that. And mm -hmm. it feeds a lot of people. So I've learned to just Keep it very, very simple. Don't complicate. I don't buy a whole bunch of things that are just novelty. I just get what's real food. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes.
So there's a lot of people out there that have really bad eating habits. Maybe they <laughs> eat bad food or they go out to eat too much. Yeah. So if you were recommending how to get on the right track and to break those bad habits to somebody, what would you say? Oh, that's another great question. So how do you, let me ask you this real quick and then I'll get to the answer. How do you feel when you've eaten something that maybe has too much sugar, it's like too sweet or just something that, you know, maybe wasn't homemade and you just feel like it came from a box. I'm sure that was a long time ago for all of you, but mm -hmm. I'm sure you remember how it made you feel versus something that was home cooked and uh, fresh. Do, do you know the, the difference in your mind? Uh -huh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like back then when I would go out to eat, um, you would spend all this money on food. And then after a couple hours, what good is it anymore? It, it doesn't feel, you don't feel, you maybe feel sluggish or hungry again, or you just didn't feel satisfied, right? Mm -hmm. It feels real, good at the time. But then. It feels good at the time, yeah. Like you just wasted a lot of like money and time on something you could have just done at home. That would have been mm -hmm. just way better for yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. So if I think one of the advices I would give to people is to kind of slow down and think about how you feel after you eat certain things. And when you take the time to, you know, make something for yourself, it doesn't have to be complicated. A salad is, it doesn't have to be, tomatoes and cucumbers is a salad. Around the world, that's called a shepherd salad. Why do we have to get complicated with 25 different ingredients to call it a salad? I think we overcomplicate cooking at home. That's why it becomes very overwhelming to people. So mm -hmm. if we just, you know, I look at, for example, Italian food. In Italian culture, a nice homemade piece of bread, a little bit of olive oil, and some tomatoes is a meal. It's a, it's a, it's a good substantial snack, for example. How healthy is that? And how complicated is it? It's not complicated. Slice a few tomatoes, sprinkle some olive oil, maybe a little salt mm -hmm. and bread, and you can feel satisfied because those ingredients are wholesome, they're pure, they're natural. Now versus like a candy bar or um, a, a burger from a place that doesn't really even give you <clears throat> meat or real cheese, it will make you feel horrible. So we have to look at, you know, how do we feel? I think that's what I would tell people is to think about how you feel. And and also you mentioned the, the bank account, right? It's so mm -hmm. expensive to eat out. And it's it's not, it doesn't always feel satisfying. Why not use that money to buy really nice quality foods? And they're beautiful. You you know, sometimes when I bring home, uh, I go to like a farmer's market or a the market that has lots of veggies and I come home and I lay it all out, peppers, tomatoes, uh, onions, uh, bananas, everything, you name it. I just, I, I'm in awe of how beautiful a, what Allah made and gave to mm -hmm. us is. And it's a lot of food. When you look at it, it's like, we can do so much with that. And when people learn just very basic recipes, with tomatoes, onions, potatoes, for example. You can make lots of things with that and maybe a couple of eggs, right? Mm -hmm. Learn to cook very simply and very basically. It's kind of like having an outfit that you is versatile and you can make, you know, 10 outfits with a few pieces of clothing. That's sort of what it's like. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just about learning what to do with what you have. So um, you were mentioning how in in the Italy in the Italian culture they have that the really simple ingredients and I yeah I hundred percent like agree like in the entire world they started off at pure really um, healthy simple ingredients for their foods yeah. and then um, the Western world came in and then they started making uh, artificial things and that's actually been kind of uh influencing some of the countries around the world now so yeah. it's kind of like i bet there's some like still some uh some towns that you can find like smaller towns that have still have that but if you go to like the cities 
they're gonna have like McDonald's and KFC. And when we went to Umrah, it was just, there was so much of that. I know it's a travesty. I think that, well, Italy has some of the longest living people in the world, Italy and Japan. Yes. And the thing is they eat a variety of foods. They eat fresh things and they also grow a lot. I think I can speak to Italian culture to say most Italian people that I grew up with all had gardens. Everybody had a garden back then. And even I think if you go to Italy now, aside from the cities, I mean, they pride themselves in growing their own food. It's a, it's a, it's, it's just a way of life. And when you grow your own, you really observe the miracle of something planting a seed in the earth and then having it grow to something that is edible is truly a miracle. Mm -hmm. And I think that has a lot to do with why it's their approach to life, their mindset. And they're also very stubborn about the quality of food. They're mm -hmm. very, very much about organic is not a label. Organic is just how the food is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Since when was it smart to put chemicals and poisons on our food, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I think we have to help people to really sort of um, demand that the food be free of those things, free of chemicals and poisons. It needs to be normalized, right? Not the other way around. I think people have sort of accepted what is, but what is, is making everybody sick. And so we need to, through you guys and your show, you have you have so much potential to just get that message out, right? And, yes. and, and tell the world, hey, we want a healthy lifestyle. You know, we want to grow up, be strong and healthy. And you, that's not possible without a clean food system. And for that to happen, people need to change their minds, the mindset. And 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 like you mentioned, Noah, about the, the cost of eating out, but people mm -hmm. often complain about organic food being more expensive. And what I tell them is, I agree. I don't think organic food should be expensive. I think all food should just be without chemicals. But the, the way the, the way the situation is now, we have to sort of demand with our dollars and we have to buy those organic things and just push the other stuff out of the market. All the stuff that has poisons, don't buy them. And eventually, eventually, the market will respond to the demand of the people. That's how it works. So we have to, instead of putting our money in junk food, we have to put our money in good food. Mm -hmm. So boycott all the, all the bad foods. Just yeah. get rid of it. Yes, just don't buy it. Don't yeah. buy it. If, if, if people don't buy it, it the companies will shift. And it, it is happening. It is happening where a lot more companies are... You know they're they're going to halal, for example, because so many people demand halal. They're going to gluten free. They're going to uh, vegan because people demand it. So, but I think the the most important thing really is the organic needs to just be normalized. You mm -hmm. know that that's a really big thing because I I don't want and and I don't want to go to the grocery store see some beautiful vegetables and then find out that they're full of poisons right mm -hmm. i don't that's not nice yeah it's not what we want so what are your favorite ramadan foods oh oh my goodness i love so many things um you know first of all i love i love <laughs> i love my date recipe you'll mm -hmm. see it not in that cookbook but in, it's on my website it's I make it every year. Um, it's dates that are stuffed with nuts. And then on the top, you put uh, creme. You can do creme fraiche or Italian mascarpone cheese or lebna, a little dollop of it. And then on top of that, you shave some lemon and uh, lime um, peel. So you, you grate the lemon. So, it's a, so you get this aroma of lemon. And then on top of that, you put nuts like pistachio or walnuts or whatever. But I've, over the years, I've made that recipe in so many different ways. Like I've, I've added a little bit of honey on them. I've added a little olive oil on them. That's probably my favorite Ramadan recipe ever. Um, is it difficult when you're fasting to like, when you're cooking, is it hard? Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm so used to it that it doesn't bother me. In fact, years ago, people used to say, tell me to stop posting recipes on my uh, social media during Ramadan because they said it was it was too tempting. And I said, well, first of all, we have to have willpower because I mean, this is this is the month where you develop your 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 willpower, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I was just sharing recipes for ideas, you know, to cook. So I found it funny that people were saying, no, don't post the recipes. It's just too tempting. Um, it's, it's, it's not difficult, but I, I get tired. When I'm tired, I, it's hard to, you know, mm -hmm. it's hard to cook, but I try to do it. I try to do the cooking when I'm, I have the most energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. I have two questions for you. Sure. One of them. Have you had any experience with farming any like crops you've talked about that a lot oh yes i have had um i've had my own garden in my yard which you guys you guys came yeah you guys came but you were littler you were smaller so i don't know if yeah you so it's i don't know if i did he didn't no, but you did, but yeah you guys did and you saw i don't know if you saw the garden at the time i think it wasn't um yeah i don't know if we i don't even remember no you don't yeah remember. it's hard to remember well, I had I had that, but before I had a yard, I had a I I rented a space at Community Gardens, and I would I would go and you know they you rent like a little plot of land, and I would I would grow tomatoes and peppers and things like that. Um, and then I just do a lot of visiting of farms for my work. So I've seen date farms, um, avocado farms, olive tree farms in Turkey. Um, mm -hmm. Is where we get our olive oil from. Uh, yeah, I'm. I love farms. Uh, farmers are some, the most important people in our society. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's respected. So I feel like they don't get paid much, which is really sad. Like they do a lot of work, and then they still don't really get paid much. No, and I, I feel we we really really need to support our farmers, and we need to make this mindset of you know, people who farm or people who garden, you know, I, I've been made fun of a lot for gardening, you know, and I don't understand why, but nowadays it's trendy and it's, it's, mm -hmm. oh, grow your own stuff. But really, you know, it isn't until recently that people didn't grow food. Everyone typically had a garden, even in America for a long time. It's only recently that we've gone away from having food grown on our land to just going to the grocery store for everything. Most people never did that. Mm -hmm. Because the food that you like pick up straight, right? It's the most nutritious. It has absolutely nutrition. The, the nutrients are very, um, the nutrients are very, uh, pa it's packed. Packed, exactly. I mean, you pick a carrot from the ground, mm -hmm. you bring it in the, in, in the house, you wash it and eat it that moment mm -hmm. or that day versus, uh, Carrots from the store that are picked, that probably sprayed with chemicals. They're picked weeks before, maybe it's stored. Then they're wrapped in plastic. Then you bring them home. And then how much later do you eat them? It, every day that it's picked, it starts to lose its nutrition day by day by day by day. So it's really important to grow something, you know, mm -hmm. grow something, give your body some of that, you know, nutrient dense power packed food i'm sure your mom tells you that all the time mm -hmm. i have one more question for you before we go mm -hmm. so a lot of restaurants and places they use advertisements a lot to mm -hmm. uh, advertise their products and say oh this is really good for you trust me this is awesome this tastes this is the best you'll be super happy once you have this <laughs> how can humans um let's see how how it is how can humans um stay away from those and make sure that they don't listen to them. It's very tempting, trust me. You're right. right. Advertising is very tempting, whether it's on TV, about you know products or restaurants or whatever. We have to be able to think for ourselves, right? We have to educate ourselves, learn, and they can people can start by watching your show. They can start by, you know, listening to what your mom has to say. She's got some awesome details about nutrition and health and, um, and then learn how to make good food themselves, like on my website, for example, right? Like we, mm -hmm. got, we have to go to sources. There's so much information out there available. 
today. And Allah tells us in Quran, what's one of the first things he tells us? Ikra, read. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm actually memorizing that too. Are you? Oh, yeah. mashallah. Yes, yeah, so there you go. Read. It's up to us to be advocates and proactive in, in our lives. We need to learn and we need to read and say, does that make sense to me or not? You have this akal, right? You have this brain mm -hmm. and you, you need to use it rather than taking whatever anybody says to you and then just believing it as like word. You know, we have to learn to discern. I, nowadays, you know, I know so much about the food industry because I've been in it for so many years. When I see advertising, it doesn't even phase me anymore because I know I, I see products. I can look at something and tell you it's not real. It's processed or it's not healthy. I can just look at cheese and I know that takes time and experience and learning and reading. And so it's up to us to be the the, the advocates of our own lives, right? Mm -hmm. We can do that. We can definitely do that. We have more control over our own, you know, what goes into our minds than we than we think. Wow, this was amazing. We are amazing. praying everyone uses this month to upgrade their kitchen to the halal kitchen. Aww. So what is one thing uh, people can do today? Like they can just go right now and they can make it happen. Go right now, make it happen. Okay, I I love the idea of of, and I did a hashtag of this one time. Of um, cook with cook what you've got. So do not go to the grocery store today. Go to your cabinet, your cupboard, your pantry. First of all, kind of try to discern what maybe isn't so healthy and put it to the side. You know, think about discarding it. But look at what you have that's fresh, that's natural that's simple, that's not processed. I'm sure everybody has something in their fridge. And try to challenge yourself to make a, a, a mini recipe with that. Like if it's just two ingredients, what can you do with it? You know, like I said before, you know, cucumbers and tomatoes. You can make a salad with that. You have a little salt, you have a little olive oil, a little lemon juice. It's a salad. It's, a, it's like a meal, right? People eat that with some bread and, and they're okay. Right. So what I would challenge people to do today. Yes. Get the salt. You know, <laughs> I would challenge people to stop thinking that everything is outside of you and outside of your kitchen, you know, and, and really make your kitchen that this little haven where you create the best, most nutritious food and simplify it. it does not have to be a lot of stuff. Just keep it fresh and keep it real and you will be fine. Awesome. So you are so amazing. My mom can't stop talking about how amazing you are. And now uh -huh. we know why. So uh -huh. where can people learn more about you and your work? Okay. So I am uh, all over social media at My Halal Kitchen. So Instagram, Facebook, um, Pinterest, Twitter, threads, everything, My Halal Kitchen. And also MyHalalKitchen.com. I am teaching online halal culinary school now. So for people who want to learn how to cook in a halal way, any cuisine on the planet, we're doing it. Italian, French, Turkish, Spanish, whatever. <laughs> we're doing it in a halal way. Um, and I have a new newsletter called Everyday Mediterranean, and it's on Substack. So over there, I'm talking about uh, different foods and recipes from around the Mediterranean because that's my favorite cuisine on the planet. And I spent some time in Turkey. So I want to share a lot of the recipes that I learned when I was living there Turkey. and also my Italian roots. So that's just a, a side from the, the halal kitchen work. But uh, yeah, I'm all over the place. Awesome. And your book. Thank you. Oh, you guys are so sweet. You like it. Did you try the tacos? What page is it? I'm not sure, but it's under Latin cuisine. Uh, oh, we'll find it. We'll, we'll find, find it. it. We'll have your it. call, Iman flips through it. Let's uh -huh. recap your key points from today's podcast. So food doesn't have to be complicated. Home cooking can get overwhelming if you complicate things. 
Cooking at home is beneficial uh, on so many levels. You have control over the ingredients. The aroma of the food actually increases digestive enzymes. And most importantly, eating together as a family. It is so important for our overall mm -hmm. health and wellness. Go to your own kitchen and find some fresh ingredients and then come up with some recipes. God has given us so many amazing fruits and vegetables. Learn to use these and cook simply. Slow down and think about how you feel after you eat certain things. You can create your own Ramadan halal kitchen. Clean out your kitchen of processed foods. Stick to simple foods like soups, roast chicken, rice with meat. Soup is excellent in Ramadan. It'll help your stomach getting warmed up again. Food needs to be free of chemicals that is making everyone sick. Think about starting a garden as well. Sounds fun. You uh -huh. should something. And also, educate yourself. Learn how to make good food. We need to change our mindset. Stop buying these poisons. Put your money in real food. If people didn't buy it, uh, companies can shift. Organic needs to be normalized. It is up to yes, us to become advocates of our own lives. Remember to keep it fresh and keep it real. Also, uh, make sure that you don't go to restaurants this much. It's, it's not worth it to spend all of this money on food that doesn't benefit you in a couple hours. That's right. You guys are great, great learners mm -hmm. <laughs> and great promoters. I loved it. This was Thank so you. much fun. Thank yeah. you so much. Mm -hmm. Mubarak. <laughs> and thank you everyone for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Zan Sorry. I'm Noah. And I'm Iman. Follow my family and I on social media, Hello Sick Mom MD, and look out for my mom's book. She's working on her eighth book. I'm doing the illustrations, and we're also writing a book. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Kids need to learn from other kids. Please download our pod to please download our podcast on iTunes and leave reviews so other kids and families can benefit. We need to work together to create a healthy future for all of us and the planet. Join us next week for another episode of the Hosted Kids Show, where kids are crying kids. Thank you, everyone. Uh, also, make sure to follow Miss um, Muffy's social media so that you can get awesome recipes from her as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Salam.